So, to my mind, virtual reality is kind of like the promised jetpack. It's a thing that for many years we've been promised was going to happen. And it, it took a long time to get there, but we're actually finally there with virtual reality now. We're at the beginning of it. The thing that's fascinating about it as an educator is that it is, really sits at the crossroads of art and technology. And to my mind, um, where that comes about is that technologically, um, we needed to get to a certain point where virtual reality would even work. We've tried it multiple times in the past, and essentially it ended up with a lot of people getting sick. Um, and th there's reasons for that. And the reasons for that are somewhat well known about how we process information. Um, but that's a relatively in-depth and in another conversation. Um, but it's one that, that we have in, the, in our innovation program, where we talk about the neuroscience and psychology of how we, we process information. But Really, there were a number of advancements uh, that come out of mobile phone technology um, and feature films. Those are really the two places where um, uh, images used to be very low resolution. They weren't drawn quickly enough. And we were very, very bad at understanding how to move things in a, in a, a virtual space, like in the, in the computer graphic world. Um, and those are problems that, that we solved over the last few years. Once those were solved, um, suddenly virtual reality became something that, that we could do and we could manufacture. Um, it's much more complicated than that, but that, that's really the gist of it. Um, along with that, there were a number of advancements um, or clarity in, um, in psychology and neuroscience about how we understand the world you know, um, and that's gone into the uh, software and the creation of the worlds in virtual reality um, to uh, understand. Like a, a great example is uh, when you're riding in your car on the freeway for half an hour and you get off the freeway and you stop at a stoplight, your body, if you look out the window, your body feels like it's still moving. That, that, that's a, a condition that we have and that's a problem in virtual reality that you have to solve. Um, in how you work with the software and the world that you're in. So um, all this has led to us um, you know, being able to, to create systems that, that function and work. And one of the interesting things about that is um, as virtual reality has emerged, outside of entertainment, everybody keeps talking about this concept of empathy. And the reason for that is empathy is seeing the world through the eyes of someone else. And that's actually what virtual reality is. You're replacing reality with a different version of reality that's manufactured. And if you're doing that, you can see through somebody else's eyes. And so, um, you know, writers love to write articles, and it's really great to have a theme to do that. Uh, and so one of the themes that has really emerged strongly is, is this idea that, that we could look at the world through the eyes of a refugee, or we could look at the eyes of somebody who's incarcerated, um, or somebody who's slowly going blind, or you know, things that are very far from what would be our normal experience. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's fascinating because A, there really isn't a precise definition of empathy. So first of all, we don't exactly know what we're talking about. Um, and people have very different reactions to being in, in virtual reality. Um, but it's, uh, it is this experience where you are seeing through somebody else's eyes, but you're still yourself. And so an area of exploration has to be, how are we going to maintain ourselves how are we going to take the vision of another as we get more and more deeply into these worlds? You know, are we, if we spend 20 hours a week in virtual reality, are we going to end up being more adaptable to the way that, that, that people can, can understand others? Are we just going to really say, well, I'm done with that character. I need a new one. You know, it's, it's an unanswered question. Um, and it really may be some people go one way, some people go another. So if, if I'm thinking about um, 
if our capacity for empathy will grow through technological experience? I think it will. I'm an optimist, but I also, uh, you know, data has shown about people's fears that they are reduced when they have firsthand knowledge. Like in my mind, that's why uh, maybe cities are in, uh, a little more accepting than outside of a city because you're forced to be together. You have knowledge of, of others. So if we are living in a world where we can take on the experience of others more readily, then I believe that that will lead to greater empathy and you know, um, more acceptance of others. You know, because we, we, we get what they are. We, we get what they're experiencing. I think that can only be a good thing.